For those that don't know that are watching across the United States, Broadway is the street, the strip, whatever you want to call it. It's actually a few streets now that you say that, but um, downtown Nashville, where Austin claims to be the live capital of music. I'm not going to take that away from them, but... I hope that one day they, they do kind of change that yeah. uh, verbiage and it, it becomes downtown Nashville. Yeah. That, that, that would sound better because yeah. it, it has taken over a larger part than right. just the, the street itself. Uh, but, you know, you, you think back to where else in the world could you say that you could have live music on over 100 stages at any given point in time for uh, 16 hours a day, seven days a week? Crazy. I don't know anywhere. Broad, uh, Las Vegas. Yeah. That'd be the only place. But but I don't even know that you would have mornings and afternoons. That typically what you have with Vegas, you would have uh, in the evening to late evening. Yeah. Uh, is where your performances would be. Now you you obviously you'd have probably two hundred stages mm -hmm. in Vegas, so that they'd outnumber the stages, but but not the the enduring day. And when, in one geographical area where you can walk to every venue as well. Yeah. But I told somebody the other day, I look at it a lot like the, we talked about session players, especially from the 80s and 90s in Nashville. And essentially, that's what they did. They did four-hour shifts at every one of those sessions, uh, and they would just bounce from session to session. And you, so they're, you know, let's say you're a hot player in the 1990s. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're probably going to do a 10 to 2 then you're probably going to go do a two to six. Yeah, yeah. And if you're really good, you're going to go ahead and do a six to 10. <laughs> uh, and then you're going to wake up and you're going to do them again yep. tomorrow. Yep. And, and those session players were so afraid to lose their jobs that they would do them. Yep. Uh, it, whether they were had the flu, you know, to, to those guys at that time, you could have had the worst disease. You could have had chicken pot, I mean, whatever. <laughs> you're going to go to work yeah. because you're scared that missing one date would end your career uh, because you were the guy yeah. and, and people were waiting months to get a Brent Mason or a uh, Michael Rhodes or, mm -hmm. you know, whoever on their tracks. They're waiting months yeah. and, and you just could not miss, you couldn't miss. Uh, so anyway, I, 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 I look at modern day Broadway, as you say, uh, as like the same as, as those sessions, because you're, you're bouncing from venue to venue. And so uh, in, in the same token that those guys were using stuff like this and having the cartage crews that were taking it and dropping it off for them so they could maybe grab a taco or something, yeah, yeah, right. get a little bite to eat, some nourishment, you know, while their, their cartage guys are taking this gear. And now we've moved from this to today's pedal boards right. and and these things this smaller idea uh, is basically the same thing as this and it's getting the same results as this and it's allowing a player to walk into any venue in town and take their sound and plug into the situation and and perform and so in in, in a lot of ways my dream has come true yeah. because i might not be recorded you might not hear anything ever that i've ever done you might but but chances are you might come to nashville and you might see me play live and in in that note you're going to hear uh my best yeah performance you're going to hear my best gear you're going to hear my best 32 years of of what this can give you uh, it, it, it's it's a lot the same yeah and so i i really don't i don't take that for granted i did for a long time but i don't take it for granted anymore and i i consider myself lucky that i live where i live because i don't know where i could be a professional musician i look out i've got friends i've got friends on facebook and well, you know they live in los angeles los angeles is a music epicenter it always has been but i look out there and they say they're full-time professionals. They're full-time bass players. They're, they're playing, they're doing these sessions. You know more about this than yeah. I do. I'm not really on the end on, but there's some sessions where you can just log in and people will send you stuff from oh, all yeah. over the world. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what that is. I, yeah, I, online I, stuff. I'm sure it's great. I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying like, okay, maybe you are doing that every day. I don't know, but like legit, Broadway needs to get some respect because these guys are going down there and there's some of these younger kids that are doing four, they're doing 16 hours. 
And, and you know, they're not going to be able to do that forever, I know. But, but they're doing it, and it's amazing. And it's like, you know, if I was selling Ampeg or, or the F word here, if I was selling their products, I'd have guys on Broadway in the magazines. Because they're the ones that are using that stuff. Sure. And they're they're playing it every day. Yeah. Like I, I don't Getty Lee isn't even touring anymore. I love you, Getty. <laughs> You're not doing anything anymore. Right. He, he, show some love to the guys that are actually selling your all equipment. All those people that you walk know. through all those clubs every I, day. And so like, I yeah. I do take a little bit of offense to anybody that knocks what, what Broadway is now. Broadway is not what it used to be. You know, we're reading charts. We're doing everything that a session player would have done in the 90s. Well, okay, so let's talk about that. The corp, I, like I call it more of the corporate aspect of Broadway that, that people, would, that I guess, would come to town wouldn't know that all these bands are put together and sometimes it's the first time. Maybe, Maybe not. You tell Many me times. people playing with each other. At least a week, There's a every standard week. set list. Kind of 500 songs. There used to be. Okay, so tell, tell us about that. Well, I, they, and there used to be. I, I think that, you know, when I first moved to town, uh, that, that did exist. And, and those songs were your typical historian songs. Yeah. Uh, your, your Johnny Cash, your Folsom Prison Blues, yeah. your Merle Haggard Working Man Blues. Um, if you were a female, you were going to sing, um, you know, uh, Patsy Cline. Yeah. Tammy Wynette. Sure. You were going to hit Dolly Parton. You were going to do the biggest songs that those classic artists ever did. Willie Nelson, On the Road Again. Yeah. You know, that's the, the, those were the standards, and they always have been, and I think they always will mm -hmm. be. And now, uh, that was in the 90s, and as you moved into the 2000s then, then you started having people that were listening to the radio at the current time that were coming in. They hadn't been exposed to the older country music. Matter of fact, they had no idea who those people are. Merle Haggard, Johnny yeah. Cash, they don't know who they are. They come in and they're like, I'm hearing Rascal Flatts. Sure. I'm hearing Jason Aldean. I want you to play the songs that I think I know so I can sing along and enjoy. And so all of a sudden, then uh, the set list went out the window. Yeah. Now we're finding ourselves in the modern age, you know, uh, we've got our phones yeah. and uh, on the phones, you know, we, if, if the, if the um, let's just say that every request is an opportunity, a business opportunity. Okay. And from the band stage, you're operating a business. Okay. So if your business is to make pizza, and somebody comes up to you and says, well, I hear you make a really good pizza, but it's not the one that I like. Mm. The one that I like is from uh, where I came from in Baltimore, Maryland. And up there, that guy will make me a 24-inch pizza, mm. and he'll put barbecue sauce right. on it. Right. And you're going, okay, now I've never made a 24-inch pizza before. I do have some barbecue sauce. <laughs> And I think I could get 24 inch pizza in my oven, but you're gonna have to give me a second and we need to be paid for it because we make 18 inch pepperoni pizzas here. So are you willing to pay? So there is a lot, what I'm getting is there's still a lot of thinking on your feet and improvisation and- Same as a session guy. Yeah. You, you're, you're offered an opportunity to create. Uh, we're not in a, in a moment like that we're not going to be able to sit down and analyze and learn the line. Yeah. Where, you know, exactly. if there's a bass line, there's a lick. Oh, you, hey, there's a lick in the pre-chorus. Yeah. No, that's out the window. We, we're going to catch the basic ideas. Our song singer is going to get the lyrics, which are, today it's like you can get lyrics. These phones, like, right. they know what you're thinking <laughs> before you ever, I swear that's the truth, man. I mean, like, I'll go and I'll look to the phone and be like, I need the words to it. It's already, I, don't need, I didn't even say George Jones, and yeah. it's already on there. Crazy. They know. So anyway, lyrics is easy. Um, almost every song, no matter how obscure, uh, already has a chord chart under ultimateguitarchords.com. Yeah. So you're reading numbers, you're reading letters, too, as a musician. Sometimes, uh, and that, that app... Uh, now can transpose for you if Which you pay uh, Ultimate Guitar. If you pay okay. for the app, fully pay for it. Some of it's free. But if you pay for the app, you can get the transpose wow. feature. So that's great. So I guess what I'm boiling it down to is someone get one and get, get start on Broadway, and we can talk about the politics. But obviously, 
it's not just like looking at Roman numerals. I, it's hard to explain, right? I mean, you got to know how to connect chords. I'm getting a little bit more technical on bass, but you got to know the the genre. If someone says this, like, what's a typical? Like, I guess, what could someone practice to even get to the level of being able to play on? Broadway? I'll relate it to you like this, yes. because in a lot of times, I am a little bit of, of a leader on the shifts that yeah. I do. And I, I lead from example, I, I, I've got people that I play with that I respect immensely. I think they're some of the most talented players I've ever played with. And, and they're so good and, and they're fast because you have to be. Yeah. Just like if you're on a session, yeah, that, that demand is equally there. And, and nobody wants to be perform bad. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't want that reputation going around this town. Uh, so everybody's in it to win it. So I'll look over a drummer and, and, and uh, um, the request is for a Merle Haggard song. Now granted, you know, they, it could have been a brand new song, but I'm going to use Merle Haggard for an example. Yeah. But this drummer back here, he's, he does the late night shifts. And he just happened to be on a morning shift because he's subbing out a guy. Yeah. And so he don't play Merle Haggard because he's playing all the stuff that the kids want. Yeah. So he's like, he's looking at me in a moment of panic in his eyes. And I'm going, this song sounds exactly like ah, this. Knowing the references. Or... Yeah, because I, it, it, it's, a, 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 it's a relation. I know the song. I know what he knows. And I know that I can say to him, Look, all I need you to do is play such and such. And when we get to the chorus, and I guess that's why I enjoy the gig. And 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 it's it's a, it's a little offensive when people write it off to think that it's what it used to be because it did used to be. And let's go into that for a second yeah. because what what that was is back in the days, um, you know, there there weren't very many places to play on Broadway in the '90s. Matter of fact, the people that bought Tootsie's bought it in 1994. And it had been dilapidated for a long time. It really wasn't anything. And they they did a lot to even make it something that even, you know, a four-piece band right. could play. You know, back in the 60s when and 70s when Tootsie's was, the you know, that yeah. thing, that anybody that played there played in the back of the room, not on the stage, but they were on the floor. And they were just playing with acoustic guitars, and they weren't playing for pay. Sure. They might have played for their bar tab. Yeah. You know, and Willie Nelson might have come in there every once in a while. The whole story goes is that Tootsie's was the watering hole for the people that, that, that were playing at the Ryman Auditorium because there was no green room. Mm. If you've ever been to the Ryman Auditorium yeah. in the back, there, there is now, but there wasn't then. There wasn't anywhere in dressing rooms or anything. You literally walked off the stage and you were in the street. And so in order, what they used to do is they had a runner that would go between and they knew that everybody was waiting in the wings at Tootsie's. Uh -huh. And so five minutes, Mr. George Jones. Right, right. Okay, I'm running over to Tootsie's to get sure. George Jones. I hope he's, <laughs> I hope he's able yeah, to right. come back <laughs> and do a show. Uh, but anyway, that's what that was. And there wasn't even a back room and it certainly wasn't an upstairs. That, that, the only thing that there ever was at Tootsie's was that little front room area there. That's all it was. And so they bought it in 94 and the rest is history. And, and, and along with them buying that come another family that came in and they bought uh, what is now Legends Corner, the stage, second fiddle, uh, and a couple of places across the street. And, and so you basically had like these two families yeah. um, that, that operated basically the whole area and started building these little honky tonks. Yeah. You know, and they, they put the neon signs out there and that became a thing, you know, and it, it, it then, you know, by the time 2000, 99, 2000 came, they were legit. They were, they were happening. And then, you know, CMT started filming shows down there and started doing videos. And next thing you know, big and rich are riding horses across the pedestrian. <laughs> That's, it's, you know. Well, let's get into the business because, okay, for those of y'all that haven't been to Broadway or don't live in Nashville, we're talking, again, a whole street, but not, like you said, not even one level. Some of these are just skyscrapers of music on every floor. So we're talking about two or three levels of, of music and all with backline, with all with drums and bass cabs and 
The players are going between them. Just trying to paint the picture here. But as far as the business side goes, you already told us about the shifts. You know, you have your shifts during the day, a, a ten to one. Do you get a break, ten to one break? There's technically no five. breaks. Okay. You no. Yeah. You you take breaks. Okay. Right. But there are no breaks. Oh gosh. Okay. So there's there's selective ways that you go about doing that. Um, a lot of the ones that that I work with, uh, what we do is there's a guy maybe in the band who's capable of playing one or two of the other instruments. Right. So uh, that guy will swing a guy out. You know, I'll give you an example. On my Tuesday and Wednesday morning shifts, we start out with the guitar player comes over and grabs my bass, and I go get on the drums and give the drummer a break. Yeah. yeah. Then I come off the drums and I go take a, a song. Yeah. That same guy stayed on bass when the drummer came back, took his drums back. Then I come back and get the bass back from him, and he goes and takes a break. Wow. So it's a swing. Um, but if it's not a swing, then sometimes you have a lead singer with an acoustic guitar and they can carry a couple of tunes while the whole band will go take a two song break. Goodness. You typically don't want to do more than two because what happens is, is the people leave. You lose them. And, yeah. and, and that's a big deal. Yeah. You know, you've worked hard to, to gather a crowd and the more people that are in there, the more sales are happening and yeah. that's going to make your numbers look, and it is a numbers game. I hate to say this. It, no matter how good you are. And there are some level of talent down there that is equally, maybe even more so, better than some of the best artists you'll ever see in your life. But it's not about you. Nobody's paying a ticket price to come mm. in and see you. It's absolutely free to come into every venue down there. Mm. Absolutely free of charge. So it's not about you. And it is a hospitality environment. Yeah. You are 100% there, even though you're... You're not even really a contractor. You are more um, self-contracted. Mm -hmm. you, you're just responsible for you. But, the, but, but you have an agreement with the bar. That, that so is there a band leader and then they hire you? Is the band leader hired by the bar? Sometimes the, the leader would be the singer. Okay. I, I think singers typically are the ones that tend to get the gigs. Okay. And then they put a band together. Gotcha. But now I, I, I operate, I lead, yeah. you know, two days a week I lead one. And, you know, uh, th they've been given to me. Yeah. I, I didn't work for them. Sure. Um, well, you could have. paid your dues, I think. <laughs> That's been... not that. You, uh, you do, um, I have a rapport with, yeah. with the family of people that I work with uh, to the point that they trust me yeah. with their stage. Sure. Uh, but but that's not common, um, especially if you're new to town. It's not common right, at all. Right. You know, you you can be brand new to town. And I'll say this because this one tends to be th something that you forget about. If you're new to town, there's this horrible thing that happens. It's called the new guy syndrome. And what it is 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 that if you do get an opportunity and you're really good. The minute that somebody finds out that you're good, they're going to wear you out for about three weeks, maybe maybe six, pushing it six, and then it's going to drop off. Wow. And it happens to everybody. It happens to everybody. And that is your fight or flight. That's your make it or break it because that's the moment that most people will go, oh, well, it's over. I guess I'll move back home. Mm. But in reality, and then it might take a whole year to bounce back after the drop. Right. But, but you know, it happens to everybody. That's crazy. And you yeah. just need to know that up front. Yeah. Like you, I wouldn't move here without thinking that whatever my regular job is at home, I could get that job here. And I didn't have that experience. I can't speak from that experience, but looking back, I can tell you that that would be a better experience for everyone is if you took a good paying job that you're good at and make good money. Yeah. And then maybe even if you're only doing it part time, uh, you know, I know the idea is to play full time. It, like you said a minute ago, that is a really rare thing. Yeah. The opportunities are here in Nashville to do that even now. But, um, you're behind. Yeah. You, 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 if you haven't even moved here yet, you're behind. So don't think that you're going to move here and you're going to be... I've seen some kids move here recently, and they're doing well. And, and I, I don't blame any of them for feeling the way they do because it's a, that is a feeling when you're in your 20s, you think you can do anything. And, and it's just natural. Yeah. So, so I, don't, I don't 
have any ill will towards anybody, but I've seen it, and I've seen them move here, and I've just seen them just, just <laughs> think, especially with social media, because right. they're posting right. about it. Yep, yep. Uh, the better word would be they're boasting about it. Right, right. Uh, face boast. Uh, what are they? <laughs> face like brag. That, that was like what, that. that's the session, guys, they call it face <laughs> brag. I like that. Uh, but, but that's a real thing, by the way, yeah, face yeah. brag. So, so it's like you get on social media, and you're bragging about what all you're doing, and you're amazing, and you're the best thing that ever hit yeah. Nashville, and yeah. it's just like, no. That's that's not really how this works. <laughs> it, it's it's fine. Everybody's going to get a little bit of a laugh. But if you're really serious with yourself, that's not what this yeah, is. Yeah. But but Broadway is is a the most consistent thing that I've ever had, and I've done it. I've done it the least consistent. Of, of, for it to be the most consistent thing I've ever had, I've done it the least consistent. I've always been in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. But but I'm always able to come back to it. There was a time there that I looked at Broadway like it was the minor leagues. I, I looked at it like, okay, you're a baseball player. You get an opportunity to go to the majors for a little bit. Maybe you had an injury. Maybe you really weren't ready. Yeah. You get put back in the minor leagues and you spend another year down there and you get better and you know, or you quit, you go yeah, home. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, but it, it, in a lot of ways, it's the minor leagues. But but here lately. If we're talking about live music, it's the main well, but but this is the thing. I've the seen I've seen players come from bands where they're like playing with the top notch, top caliber country guys, the yeah. ones that are out touring major tours, and they're coming. They're leaving those gigs wow. and they're coming to Broadway. That says a lot. Okay, well, so there's one guy in particular. I won't drop names yeah. there, but there's one guy in particular. He's my age exactly, uh, and he's married. Wants to just be only his wife, man. Just, you know, got kids. Yeah. Just just tired of that grind, you know, because the artist he played with did a lot of shows. And he and so he's happy now. You know, he's he's producing, yeah. uh, writing, recording, sure. and, and doing a little bit of Broadway and, and living his best life as they Good. say. So uh more power. I was gonna ask you a few more just kind of like, you know, things I hear but I don't know. Can you get road gigs from Broadway? Like, let's say you want a road gig. Like, I want a touring gig. You play with someone on a gig. Does that happen? 100%. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and some of these kids that I'm watching, these ones that haven't been here very long, I just saw a post where they they just got on one of the biggest tours that's out there. They're on an opening act. Yeah. But that's no different than when I did sure. the throwdown with a Paz Like, You know, th those opportunities are out there. Yeah. And, and you will get that from this experience. If you're professional down there, you're... You sound great. You're Better consistent. believe it. Yeah. Better believe it. And and it, now the the misconception I think is is do the the artists come down there and hand pick you? Right. No. Right. Do their management? No. <laughs> no. No. It'll be the players it's every, every time. Yeah. yeah. Every time it'll be the players. Yeah. And 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 I play with some of the biggest hitters that country music has ever seen on a regular basis. Yeah. You know, drummers. Guitar players, I play with them on a regular basis, and it's like, and they're still out there touring, and, and but yet when they're not touring, they'll come take a Broadway gig because how can you say you're a full time musician, right? Unless you're a full time musician. <laughs> no, you're right. I don't. You're not a full time musician if you just work Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. Um, another question. Uh, feast or famine times. I know that like January, February used to be a slow time, but it seems like. Things are almost year-round now. I mean, is it still slower? I'll tell you than... what really blew my mind is po yeah. post-COVID, watching that Fifth and Broadway thing move in with the um, the shopping yeah. and the uh, retail and the, right. the food courts. Yeah. Because I, I, I would literally, I'd walk out of Legends and I'd walk across the street and into these places and I'm like... I, I've just went through a time warp. Yeah. I've just left Nashville <laughs> and I've went to LA. Right, right. And it's like, Mall what happened there. here? This yeah. I'm not home. And then I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm thinking, how are they going to survive when it's January and there's nobody? How these places pay their bills? How no, but there won't be anybody here. And I've asked the people and they've been like, oh yeah, they're here because you've got the local business people that aren't coming to the honky tonks. Yeah. That'll keep the food court open. Yeah. And but now you know one I mean, thing is it still slower during those times. It is slower. Okay. It, it'd be a lie to say that it's not. But we but have conventions. Now we have and conventions. All that. But but the bigger thing is the hockey. 
Um, uh, now, it doesn't do us any good for the locals. Right. And the locals are the ones that are supporting, you know, our hockey team. But for the ones that are traveling from out of town to see their hockey teams, yeah. they're coming. Okay. And same with the football teams, uh, you know. And, and But... Um, I don't know. I think this is to Nashville's detriment. I don't think it's a plus in any way. But they are. The street has become known as the uh, the place to be if you're um, going to get married and you're a bride. Uh, yes, yes. And you're having your bridesmaid parties. The bachelorette, capital bachelorette of the world. Yeah, I think, yeah. You know? <laughs> it, I I don't agree at all that I think it's a good thing. It's it's really not. It's not. It's not a good setting. Uh, it it's mixing a lot of. <laughs> a lot of bad things and and creating a lot of bad things. I, I think it's really bad. And and then anytime you're going to have um, a setting where you're going to have you know a lot of girls, then you're going to have those single guys too that are going to come in flux as well. Right. So you're going to have your frat guys, say for example, sure, sure. and they're going to come in in large numbers as well. And those guys are an experience that's equal to the bachelorettes. They they all have this. Um, in self-empowered entitled thing to where like you're my you're right. my cd player yes. you will do my bidding i'm here uh you know and you do what i say and uh i'll not tip you yes. uh, I, I this was this was said from a group of guys one time they said uh i'm not dipping into my 401k to pay for yours wow and so you know immediately like what what your crowd is yeah, right. so so that's why you know i kind of have a cutoff i don't play after six anymore because okay. that's when those people come right, out right they're out from six to yeah midnight and i know that that's not my crowd so i'm out but you that's know. even interesting that you can just say i want day shifts and that's it i mean that's a whole nother it works for my family environment to, yeah. and it's 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 uh it's it's certainly better in all aspects for me because it the professionalism is there in the day yeah I can't speak for that at night. And I know from my own, I, I wasn't a good example. When I did work at night, I, I wasn't a good example. I yeah. wasn't my best. I wasn't right. a professional. I was uh, subpar in every way. And so, yeah. Um, two more questions. Typical base pay nowadays. And does the audience know what base pay is? Because you were saying you're, you're really taking a lot of requests. So obviously tips is the big thing down there, getting tips. But are bars paying a base pay for musicians, or does it vary on the, as far as the club? It it varies amazingly. Okay. And 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 <laughs> I don't mean that in the, in the good sense of the word. Yeah. You've had some newer places that have moved in, like let's say uh, the Big Machine and the FGL bar yeah. that opened up, and that's on Third Avenue, and they're a little bit off of the the main drag there, and they're paying upwards of two hundred plus per band guy. For okay. a house, but but right. while I think they might let you have tips, um, I don't think you're allowed to run the tip jar. Okay. I don't think you're allowed to hustle. Yeah, uh, people can bring them up and the, the things, but you're not allowed to hustle. So, so it's all different. There's no. Oh, everywhere's different. So so the the least amount of pay I think is is in the forty dollar range. Yeah. Irony. I've made more on those forty dollars than right. I've made on the ones that offered me two hundred yeah. for the yeah. for the promise. Um, perfect example is uh, Kid Rock's bar. That the most that I've ever made ever on a single shift, and it was uh, I think it was eight hundred and twenty four dollars yeah. for a four hour two to six in the afternoon on a Saturday. Eight hundred and twenty four dollars. The base pay I think was probably seventy five dollars. Yeah. So the rest of it was tips. Yeah. Now, that has a lot to do with the vibe. Right. Everybody comes to Nashville, you know. If I said you were a baseball fan and you were going to go to Los Angeles, well, what are you going to, what you, what's your mecca? Right. Dodgers. Or you want to go to Dodger yeah, Stadium, yeah. right? Like that, yeah. Or if you, you or you're going to Boston and you're a Sox fan, I mean, like yeah. your mecca, where are you going to hit? Sure. I'm a country music fan. I'm coming to Broadway. Like, what's the meccas? Yeah. Tootsies. Yeah. Kid Kid Rocks. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, the stage maybe. Wild Horse Saloon used to be. Some of them come in and out, but your staples, Tootsies. Yeah. Kid Rock. 
Uh, Blake, Old Red. Now yeah. the new refresher things. Old Red. Uh, you know, Luke's place. That's Miranda's a whole other thing place. we can get into the artist names, but yeah. <laughs> but, the, but these are your meccas, right? Right. Uh, and especially uh, branding has everything. Yeah. yeah so so like uh, once Eric Church gets his place, I mean, like this is this is going to be the biggest one. I think his is six stories Oof. when when he finishes. Every story is going to have a a, a band stage. Um, Garth is going yeah. in. Yeah. You know. Um, Bon Jovi's building a place. Uh, Hank Jr.'s got a new one going in. Um, you know, there, there's no less than six new bars on Broadway going wow. in in the next year. Yeah, it is crazy. But uh, it's going to be more work for all of us. Yeah. We, we can't do it all. And, and I don't care how young you are. I don't care how strong you are. You can come in every once in a while and drop a quad. We call it a quad where you're doing to do four or four hour yeah. shifts, a 16 hour job. You, you can do that every once in a while. You're stupid. You're, you're stupid because it's stupid. Just let me. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> Don't do it. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, right. but, but you're going to do it because you think there's bragging rights to that. You think your boys are going to say, oh, He's the guy that I want to hire. He does a right, quad. Right, right. You're stupid. Right. Because here's what's going to happen. Nobody's paying your insurance but you unless you're paying it for yourself. Ain't nobody paying your insurance. And one day you're going to end up 50 years old yep. and you're going to have a bad back. And you're going to have ligaments and all these things are torn up and nobody will care. Yep. Nobody will care. Yep. So listen yep. to me. Yep. It's stupid. But there's enough work that like it's okay to take a double. It's okay to take doubles every day of the week. That'll make your rent yeah. easily yeah there's never any reason to take a quad unless you're just yeah. a punk yeah. exactly. and you just want to show out <laughs> and i said it and there it is <laughs> however you know much respect to anybody that does that, that that i would never do it i couldn't do it i couldn't physically do it yeah um but the thing of it is it's like the, the access is there and so like if i were a plumber and and I wanted to make good money, and I wanted to work. I want. I need to live in a town that has plumbing problems. Sure, sure. And 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 I don't need to live in a town that it doesn't even have plumbing. Yes. Does that make sense? It completely makes sense. So so <laughs> like I I gotta work at like where's a good gig for me? Uh, New York City. Right. Constant plumbing issues. Yeah. I need to live in New York City. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Like cost of living in New York City is high. It, you, you're going to pay a uh, million dollars to have a flat in New York City. So by golly, I'm going to pay. I'm, I'm, I need a lot of money to fix your plumbing problem. Yep, yep. yep. And you're going to pay it. Yep. Because you'll pay a million dollars to live there. So, so you know, the, the, the ability on Broadway is all about the command, uh, the understanding of, the fact that the people that come into your establishment are there to have a good time, and if you're able to give them the time that they want, they're able to pay you for it if you're able to ask. They're not going to pay you for anything if you don't ask for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're running the tip jar, and if you're meek and mild, and you say, well, I, I know, it, it's a real bother for me to ask you, but would you mind? No, no, I'm not going to tip you. Uh, you know, but they come up and they're like, yeah, you having a good time? Yeah. And, and the whole, <laughs> you right. stick that tip jar right there in the chest and got to push on them a yep. little bit. You're like, um, you know, the drill here, you know, so, you know, it's for like, those out from out of town again, that have never experienced it. You usually have a separate person that's part of the band or it whatever. It depends, runner. but that, that certainly works. Yeah. I've, I, here's what I have found. I, I did the math in my head and, and like, we even figure out like, maybe you're going to run a four piece. Maybe you're going to run a five-piece band. Whatever. Each band member is costing you about um, $10 an hour per person. So if it's four hours, then per person it's going to cost me $40. Did they make me $40 right. or did I lose $40? Chances are they made me $40. Yeah. Yeah. And so therefore it's better to have them. Sure, sure. That's that's the math. Yeah. But now if I get into the situation and I'm finding they're sandbagging, they don't know any songs, yeah. they're not running the tip jar, they're not doing then they're, they're not worth yeah. me having. Makes sense. So it it's it's business in every sense of the word and it's not um it's not easy. 
it's not easy and 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 it's uh the demand for uh your abilities to to meet the demand uh you, you, okay for example yesterday i did bluegrass mm -hmm. a little bit out of my element because i used to do that a lot but i haven't in a while but anyway i walked into a situation i had some chord charts but they didn't end up doing any of them in the yeah. keys of the chord charts <laughs> that's never easy yeah. i like number charts because yeah. i can transpose quicker long story short i ended up just chucking this the chord charts and used my ear yeah listen yeah, and, and uh, you know, for the most people will say, oh, bluegrass is easy anyway, it's just one, four, five. Not always, but, but for the most part, it is predictable. It yes. is predictable. Yeah. And that worked out to my advantage because there were a lot of songs, probably 80% of them that I didn't know. Wow. But I was able to predict with very little uh, mistakes, very little, uh, by using my ear. And, but, but, you know, uh, let's say it wasn't bluegrass. Let's say that it is... Okay, I don't listen to a lot of modern country music mm -hmm. because uh, now that I'm older, I have a family at home. When I yeah. get home, I want to spend my time with my family. I don't, we don't watch TV. We don't listen to radio. We don't do those things. So I'm not the guy that you want to call if you want to play Kane Brown. Yeah. I don't know Kane Brown. I, have I played Kane Brown? I have. Have I played Kane Brown for requests when people have paid good money for it? I sure have. Yeah. Were they happy? Absolutely. Yeah. Did they know that I missed the right. chorus? Yeah. They never had any idea. Uh, and then here's, here's, I'll say this. You might play with some musicians that, that have this um, complex to where they feel like you need to play the part right. Hmm. Um, that happens a lot. Hmm. A lot. And, and to, to the point that it, it will make for an uncomfortable gig because they'll be so verbally unhappy. They'll speak out loud their thoughts. They're spending so much time chewing out other musicians for missing a part that nobody else cared and they about. They forget who they're there to please. Exactly. Or and, who and, they're there to yeah, work exactly. For. And so, so that's unfortunate because it's like we could have had a great day, but yeah. you had to spoil it because of your selfishness. You, that person, that person needs to go uh, out on the road. Yeah. They need to go play the set with the guys where they can rehearse and do the thing. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you don't need to be down here. This is not the right place for you. Wow. But I, I think you're taking for granted that you have 30 years of your ear where you're hearing most of the stuff you're playing. Yeah, I mean, so again, one step back, and then I promise I'm going to put the Broadway thing to bed. Someone comes to town. They were like, what songs do I need to know? I know on Spotify there used to be like, this is the Broadway playlist, but is there any standard repertoire that you would recommend someone like diving into? I'll be honest with you, no. Okay, um, just go to the clubs and listen what people are playing? Yeah, sometimes, but I mean yeah. like, I, I, I don't know of any band that I play with that we do the same set every day. Okay. Not, not one, and I play six days a week with, with four different bands. Okay. And, and none of them follow a set list. Wow. Uh, we typically start out, um, depending on how many singers are in the group, let's say there's three, and we typically start out every day with the, those three people doing their three songs, their, their check songs. Where they're are we talking like the wagon wheels of Dixie and Delights? No, no, no. It's not even those. No, no. This okay. is just the song that you're not extending your voice, you're okay, not wearing yourself out, but you're given a good check for the sound guy. Okay. And everybody in the band knows this is your this is what you will sound like. Okay. Okay. And so for example, I sing, so I'm always one of those guys that I, I, I typically my first song that I'll sing for the sound check is Don't Rock the Jukebox, okay. Alan Jackson. Yep. It's not going to kill my voice. I'm not going to do anything dangerous. Yep. We're, we're just going to get in and out of a song. Nobody gets hurt. <laughs> and, and, but, but anything after those first three songs can be anything. You know, you, you might walk into the gig and you might go, uh, nobody's in here yet. Man, y'all ever played yeah. Africa by Toto? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm probably going to screw this up, but, you know, yeah. can, we, can we do that? And then they're going to go, no, nah, man, I don't think I'd. I don't know it. Uh, you know, can we just okay? That's cool. Or they're gonna go, yeah, let's let's play it. You know, and you know what? One, two weeks ago, I had somebody call. They wanted Africa, and they said I got a hundred dollar bill, and I, I'm like, okay, I, that's not it. We don't do 
Africa. I told them, we yeah. don't do Africa. But I'll take your $100 and we'll do Africa. Yeah. Sure enough, we did it. It wasn't great at all. And I had one of the greatest guitar players in Nashville. I don't care Broadway or not. Right. I had one of the greatest guitar players in Nashville. And he, he kind of choked on it because he overthought it. Yeah. It just it was what it was. He didn't need to be Steve Lukather. He right. just needed to right. play a $100 song and get the money. Not only did we get the money, but another guy came up behind and said, man, that was, that was great. He gave another $100. <laughs> we made $200 off embarrassing ourselves from yeah. playing so that's set your ego aside yeah you're, you're not it, nothing's going in the red nobody's recording yeah. what you're doing this is not going to end your career you know i kind of like the broadway picture you're painting for me is pretty cool actually i was thinking of jazz like where they would just kind of go in and you kind of had to you were a good enough musician to make up your solo and we do that and and uh, there there's this one drummer and uh, they, they do a version of, uh, I feel like it's Walking After Midnight. It's a female drummer. And um, I'm pretty sure that's the song. And, and she does a completely different take on it. Because yeah. she's the drummer. She, yeah. Whatever. She's singing the song. She's playing the drums. It's her song. And it, it don't sound anything like Patsy Cline. Yeah. And it's cool. And, and people love it. Yeah. You know? And, and, and there's a lot of that. Um, you know? And then there's a lot of... They come up and they got twenty dollars and they want to hear the new um, whatever singles on the radio. Whatever it is, this this redheaded bearded kid that oh, just yeah. made the, yeah. the the news. They want to hear that. I don't know it, but you know what? The lead singer can step outside, listen yeah. to it, and I can pull a chart up and and I can sing a song while they're out there, and give us one song and we'll do it. And wow. and then we do it. Is it great? It's probably not that great. Yeah. It's twenty dollars. Yeah, it was worth how many sevens are in a sixty? Right, uh, I don't almost know. ten. Let's yeah, say ten. Almost ten. Yeah, just to make so so that was fifty dollars an hour. Wow. If if you kept yeah. that yes pace up, up, yeah, that's what you're making. Hey, wow, that's great money. <laughs> <laughs> that's great money. All right, we're gonna take a short break and then we're gonna pull up some bases. See you in a minute. <laughs> 